just had word from Mr. Harper that he was called away to the bedside of a friend who was very ill. He sent me these flowers. It's a good thing he did. I don't approve of young men refusing dinner invitations at the very last minute. I'll take the box and paper, Mrs. Pringle. It's such a shame. After you said everything so beautifully, and it's getting late. Someone might be coming along at any minute. How's it? Good to the temper, as always, madam. I'm glad to hear it. She's like an actress. The better the temper, the better the performance. As long as she serves us a good dinner, I don't care how much she rages. The rest of you can just stay out of her way. Where's this dog? I'm sorry to say that, mm -hmm. but there's such an awful blizzard out. He's sweeping off the sidewalk. Oh, dear me, yes. I should have ordered an awning. But who expected a storm like this? Here's the place for our brother and the diagram. Shall I put them around? Yes, dear. Elaine, I'm going up to look after your father. He's so helpful about his ties. Remove one plate, brother. Remove one plate, madam. Oh, madam, this is certain. You wouldn't sit down with 13. 13? Why, you're right, 13. Oh, that's all due to Mr. Harper's negligence. Sick friend did nothing. He's just one of those careless young men who never respond to dinner invitations in time. His flowers indeed to make me forgive him. Now look at the trouble he's put me to. 13. I wonder who we could get to come along at the very last minute. Could the lane help me think? There's always Uncle George. He never opens his head. Mr. Morgan, madam. He always has a joke, too. Why, yes, Devin, that's clever of you. Hello, Central. Give me, give me 9572 at once, please. Elaine, your hair's much too tight. Pull it out. Oh, come here. Mr. Morgan's? Well, this is Mrs. Pringle from across the street. Is Mr. Morgan in? Well, when he comes in, tell him that I'd like him to dine with us. In about ten minutes. You expect him? Well, have him call me up right away. Now, if you shouldn't get it, then what will I do? Well, Mother, I don't have to be at the table anyway. It's your party. Everybody's married and older than I am. Didn't I put you next to Oliver Farnsworth? Millions. He's worth millions. Well, he won't be giving me any. Can't he marry you? Aren't you going to try and make a good match for yourself? I fling every eligible man I can at your head. Can't you finish the rest yourself? It's no use, Mother. You're trying to marry me off to anyone as important as he is. He frightens me to death. I lose my tongue. I'm afraid of him as I'd be afraid of the Prince of Wales. The Prince of Wales. <laughs> New York has lost its heart to him. I was just telling Mr. Farnsworth the other day that I'd give anything to have the Prince here. It would establish my social position for life, and I have such a reputation of being a wonderful hostess. Dear me, the phone. Hello, Mrs. Sedgwick. What? Caught in a snowdrift? Can't get another car? Good, the widow can't come. That leaves us 12. Remove two plates, darling. Oh, my dear, how shall we ever get along without you? Oh, but have you really tried? Oh, I'm reduced to tears. Goodbye, dear. Well, I'm glad you dropped out. <laughs> Hello, Central. Give me Lakeview 9572. Has Mr. Morgan come in yet? Well, don't give him the message I telephoned earlier about coming over to Mrs. Pringles for dinner. It's too late, you understand? There. I'm invited to the turn my deadness. But, Mother, if you only have 12 people, then Father can't sit at the head. But he has to sit at the head. It looks too indignified for the man of the house to be pushed to the side. There's no other way. There must be a woman at each end. Oh, how absurd. Of course 12 is an impossible number. I don't want any of these women at the head. There's Mrs. Darby. Such a cat. And Mrs. Answer it, Doug. <laughs> Residence. Ah, uh, Mr. Darby. Yes, sir. A message, sir. The doctor says your baby has the chicken pox. Chicken pox, Elaine. Mother. Yes, sir. <laughs> Mr. Darby sends his apologies, but owing to the transmutability of the disease, Mr. and Mrs. Darby feel obliged to regret. <laughs> and also their house guests, Mr. and Mrs. Weeble. That's four out. Then we're only eight. Quick the plates done. Can't we think of anyone to invite at the last minute? <laughs> They don't serve appetizers when they entertain. I can't afford to have them eat mine. Really? <laughs> She's not interesting enough. Mr. Connolly, he never answers a dinner, <coughs> even after all the times I've asked her. Mr. Longley? Not at the same table as you and Oliver Farnsworth. She's far too pretty, too clever. Where's our book? Back to 14, and then father can sit at the head. We'll try it. I'll 
rush and tell your father to hold up the door. Bridgeway 9325. This is a lame Pringle. To which temper am I speaking? Oh, Ella, hello. I hope you haven't finished your dinner. We had a party arranged here and the last one everybody's been dropping out. The blizzard. Couldn't you bring your family around the corner and eat with us? My mother and I thought we knew you well enough to call you like this at the seventh hour. You would? Oh, fine. Six more plates, seven. <laughs> what? <clears throat> oh. Well, uh. Donna, your mother quick. Yes. Yes, of course. Love it. Certainly. All right, my dear. Great Caesar, what have I done now? What is it, Elaine? What's the matter? I've done it. I've just done it. But I couldn't get out of it. I just couldn't. You weren't at the phone. I always lose my head and bungle things. But what? Don't keep us waiting like this. What is it? I invited Ella and the family, and she accepted. But then she said they had two house guests, and if it would be all right. And of course, I said yes, and now we're 16. 16? But madam, the table's not that long. Elaine, that's just like you. No tact, no worldly wisdom. If I'd been at the phone, I'd But I'd... you weren't at the phone. You ought to attend to such messages yourself. You know I always lose my head. But the dishes matter, and we only have 14 squats. I won't eat any. But I must not be disgraced. We'll just have to make the best of it, and it's not another board. But mother, I needn't be at the table. You are going to sit right here next to Oliver Farnsworth, and I don't want to hear another word about it. But can't we rearrange the chairs and the plates without the trouble of adding another board? Have you forgotten that Mr. Tucker weighs something like 250 pounds? <laughs> and Mrs. Conley has no way to fly. It can't be done. It's in a rage, Nanny. She says she's only prepared for 14. I can't help it. She'll have to prepare for 16. Tell her to open cans of soup and vegetables. Of the ice cream forms, the gel cream forms. Of the chin I don't like them, and I'll pretend I'm on a diet. Mother, I really wouldn't need to be at the table. Be still. Don't answer it. It's driving me mad. Hello? Oh, Jessica. What? The blizzard? You're cold. Too dangerous. Yes, dear. Your husband's quite right. It would be foolhardy. Go to bed. Put on the mustard plaster. I'm so sorry. That's wonderful. Now we're just one to <laughs> but mother, the cards are all wrong. Only six are coming that were originally invited. You'll have to make a new diagram. How many you want see? Give it to me. Here's some fresh cards. What a mess. I spent hours over that diagram. So much depends upon having guests seated harmoniously. There's the front doorbell, Dunham. I told Amy to answer it for you, but go, peek into the drawing room and tell me who it is. The murderous instrument, what have you to say? <laughs> <laughs> Hello? Mr. Farnsworth? Mr. Oliver Farnsworth? No, you're his secretary. He's what? Instructed you to make his excuses? <laughs> Had to leave for Boston at once on very urgent business. Oh, how dare he! How dare he at the last moment like this! No regards for a hostess's feelings. No regards for the effort she goes to to provide the evening's enjoyment. Business? I don't believe him. He didn't want to come. Didn't want to exert himself. Well, downright rudeness. And worth of millions. And I'm bound you should sit next to him at the table, Elaine. Oh, I'm furious. I'll never speak to him again. I won't be treated this way. Oh, no. Perhaps he really was called away on business. And I, one of the most important hostesses in this city. People clamoring to receive my invitations. All my affairs are a success. He was my most important guest. He's such a man's man, so important financially. And now not coming? Oh, I'm furious. It's all this wretched blizzard. Now I'll have to stay with the table. He's not coming until 13 again. Go to bed. Go to the nursery. I'll send you milk and crackers. So, <laughs> Mother, it isn't my fault that he was called away on business. Yes, it is. Yeah. If you'd perk up a bit and make something of yourself, he'd hear of your trash with the room of men and be curious to meet you. Go to bed. I certainly won't sit down at 13. Get out of my sight. Um, it was Mr. Morton. <laughs> Mr. Morton? But I told him his name to tell him not to come. You couldn't have received a second message, madam, or I heard him explain to Mr. Pringle how happy he was to receive your telephone invitation. Now we're 13 again. Unless you don't want me to go to bed, of course I don't want you to go to bed. We're back where we started. 14 done. I'll get the cocktails ready, madam. Amy told me there were several motors making their way through the snow. It's late now, and Cook's complaining about dinner being too dry. I will not answer that. I should say not. <laughs> Hello? Oh, Mrs. Tupper. Yes, Mrs. Tupper. What? B 
But you must come now. We're prepared for you. Yes, for eight of you. Your daughter told my daughter about your house guests, and we are delighted to have them. But you must come. There's room. Every plate is set. Oh, you're not imposing. No, it's not an imposition at all. Eight isn't all that big a number. There's room. Oh, my dear. Now, what do you think of that? Mrs. Tucker is perfectly furious with Ella for telling you about the house guests, and says that nothing would induce her to bring eight when we invited six. So Ella and Henry are staying at home. Only six are coming. We're twelve after all. But mother, if you leave at twelve, and Ella can't sit at the head. I shall go mad! People ought to know whether they're coming or not. Instead, they regret and accept and accept and regret. They drive me wild! This is my last dinner party. My very last. An utter fiasco. A haphazard crowd hurried together when I had planned everything so beautifully. Now, how shall I seat them? How shall I seat them? If I put Mr. Tupper here and Mrs. Conley there, then Mrs. Tupper has to sit next to her husband. And if I put Mr. Morgan here, oh, it's impossible. I might as well put their names into a hat and draw them out at random. I'm through. Through with men like Oliver Farnsworth. I don't care how rich they are. They're nothing without courtesy and consideration. Business, off on the train, nonsense. They didn't want to come. Didn't want to meet a sweet, pretty girl. Didn't want to marry her. Well, he's not good enough for you. Don't you dare marry him, do you hear? If you hide to a low or anything like that, I'd break it off. Yes, I would. <laughs> Oliver Farnsworth is beneath my nose. I hate Oliver Farnsworth. A note from Mr. Farnsworth. A note from Mr. Farnsworth. <laughs> <laughs> yes, ma'am. There are two strange gentlemen in the lower hall. They presented this letter. He said he was the secretary. All the other guests are in the drawing room. I counted 12 of all, including yourself, Mr. Pringle, and Miss Elaine. But the two gentlemen downstairs are waiting your answer. The one gentleman's face looks very familiar, although I just can't quite place him. Although I'm sure I've seen his face somewhere. Seen his face somewhere? My goodness, Elaine, it's the Prince of Wales. <laughs> <laughs> yes, madam. Uh, the secretary said you could cut off the telephone or central disconnect you. He was about to tell you that Mr. Farnsworth knew that the balloon had prevented his harness from keeping engagement way of town. The Prince of Wales, sitting in my lower hall, waiting for me to ask him to dinner. But then we'll be 13 again. <laughs> uh, there's a secretary, miss. He's body. Of course, the secretary, Elaine. Serve the appetizers done for the guests may sit wherever they choose. I shall bring the prince in with me. But mother, wasn't it nice of Oliver Farnsworth to send the prince in this place? Have they always said that Oliver Farnsworth is the most considerate of men? <laughs> <laughs>